Sven Haltinger, I'm here at Comprox. And uh, my today's topic is really related to the pharmaceutical industry. I have a background in this uh, pharmaceutical industry and I um, have a, a project in collaboration with the uh, Hochschule of Eschweiz. So what I would like to give you, sorry, is to give you uh, a little bit of background. What is drug safety? What is the intention of drug safety? I guess the majority of the people have no idea or never came across drug safety. Um, then a little bit about the concept. What has it to do with text? <coughs> what uh, are we doing in this uh, project? Then the approach which was chosen. And uh, finally, no, it, it's too fast. Uh, finally the, the results. So we would like to split this presentation in two parts. The first two parts I will give you and then I give it, give it over to Jonas. So let's go into the details. So in the late 50s and 60s uh, there was a, an issue with a, with a drug called Thalidomid. Uh, this drug caused in unborn children malformations, the, the elderly of us know it from uh, back uh, in the past. This was the reddish child with uh, no arms or with uh, malformed arms or no legs. The drug was also was better known as Contagon. It came then to the Contagon scandal when it became public that uh, this drug caused uh, malformation in babies. So as a result, as a result, <coughs> As a result, the drug manufacturers of the drug uh, which produced the drug had really then come across uh, a better monitoring of drug safety. Now the regulators, the health authorities said, hey, look, you cannot stand uh, the way you have done this, so it has to be monitored. That was uh, the point drug safety came into place. The health authorities said, okay, look, a uh, pharmaceutical company has to demonstrate effective use and safe use of their drugs. And a drug has to be tested before it comes into the market. And even worse, it has to monitor it from the first intake until it is taken from the market. So that's uh, the background. So. What, has, what it has to do with, with text. Um, we have here an example report, so that's the way uh, these reports are reported to the pharmaceutical industry. We have here chosen one and said, okay, uh, on the 7th of January 2006, my patient, a 20, uh, 24 years old lady, presented arthritis and muscle pain. We treated her with diclofenac as an example. Three days later, she came into our hospital with skin alteration and dizziness. Well, sincerely yours, Dr. House. So that's the way such a report can look like. So we have seen, we have here a kind of a text we have to analyze. So this is a quite simple one. This is an example case. But uh, nevertheless, so there's an organization uh, which said, okay, what exactly has to be reported or what is the content of, of such a report. The short version is the SIOMS. Uh, this is a council uh, which consists of pharmaceutical industry and also health authorities. They have the location in Geneva. And they really said, okay, what we need as a core element is an identifiable patient. We need an identifiable reporter, we need a drug or drugs, and finally we need an effect, an adverse event. So this is the skeleton we have based our project, so this is the, these are the main parameters we are looking for in the text. So the process and challenge in a nutshell we face is we have medical text, which, is, which can be structured, more or less, and we have also medical forms. These are our substrates 
for, or this is the basis for our analysis. So in one hand, we have the, this, this kind of free text, and in the other hand, we have these medical forms, which are more or less, uh, or which are better structured. What we have to do is, as a first point, we have to identify data we are looking for. In the second step, we have to validate this data. We have then to allocate uh, the identified data. And finally, we have to submit it in, uh, in this form you can see. So taken together is really to extract the data we are interested, to validate it, and then to transform it into a, new, uh, into a new form which has to be submitted to health authorities. There is another challenge uh, in this, this kind of process. This all has to be done within 15 days. So the pharmaceutical industry is always behind or uh, to, to be compliant to fulfill this 15 days uh, reporting timeline. So, why we are doing this, this kind of, of project is the current process is really based on operators. The majority of this work is done in India, some, some work is done in, in the United States. It is time consuming, it's, there are a lot of costs, and it's not really the uh, status of the art in the 21st century. So what we try to do is to come up with a new process, with a, with an automated process, which is at the end supported by an operator. It's not possible to fully automate uh, such a process. It's too difficult, but we try to have a, a high grade of automation. So the final goal is then really to have higher capacities and to, to lower the costs. So, coming now to the data format, as we already said, or I already introduced, is we have two kinds of, of format. We have this, these forms, which is, let me say, uh, not so difficult, as you, you have a, a part which says, okay, you have a birth date and you have, you have the date. From, uh, from the computer science, it's not really uh, difficult to extract this kind of data. But uh, the, diffi the difficulty comes in with this kind of free text. We, we have here uh, an example of, of an X-ray. And in medicine, the, the other challenge is that there are not so much standards. So uh, uh, a physician or healthcare providers are really free to formulate their findings or their, their diagnosis in different ways. So, this free text is, at the end, our, our main challenge. So, then we said, okay, fine, how can we extract or really go into the text? So, uh, we try to establish a knowledge graph. So, it's really built on these four key parameters. We have, in the middle, we have the patient, we have the adverse event. We have a drug and we have a reporter. And that's really the beginning of the extraction or the, the validation. And then we start really to build on, like on a, on a tree, that okay, a patient has a gender, has an age. So when we have established the core elements in the text, we go ahead and try to find out further information. So we have the drug, so there's a treatment date, there's a stop date, uh, there are various uh, other parameters, the same with the adverse event, we have an outcome, we have an onset, and so on. So we can really build on this. The same is true with the reporter. At the end, the reporter is a person or an institution with an address, with a name. So that's the way we build uh, our analysis of our text. So to go further into the detail, we have in a text, for example, when we go to, to a gender, we, it was mentioned in this text, a female, pa uh, a female patient was hospitalized, so we have a hint. So we, we try to come from different directions to really validate all the information, to bring all the information together, 
we, we can get out of, of the text. So as I said, in the, in the sentence we, we have a hint, we have chunks, uh, the female patient, or we have a token female. So we can really validate and say, okay, uh, obviously we have a, a female patient. So that's the point to hand over. Yeah, to me. So can everybody hear me? You uh, back? Yeah, awake? Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you a few things about our approach. Well, our target is to help the human operator with an algorithm so his or her work life is more efficient. So, in a way, our algorithm has to work like a human. It gets the medical text and the medical form data as an input and has to create the science form as the output. Later on, we'll have a closer look on what's actually inside the algorithm. But first, we have to think about how do we measure the performance of the algorithm? How do we know if it is any good? Well, in order to do that, we need to compare the output of the algorithm to the perfect result, to the ground truth. The sort of industry standard way to do this is with simple DF1 measure. It's widely used, some people in here are probably familiar with it. But it is also very abstract. You, know, you cannot go up to your manager and just simply tell them, hey, we just reached a new F1 score of 0.9. And he just looks at you funny because how much is an F1 score of 0.9? Is it this much? Is it even good? Nobody really knows. And since we have to do a lot of communication with people outside the field, with people who do not know how our measures work and what they actually mean, we tried something else. We tried, oh, still the same problem. Yep, very sensitive. We tried to, our score revol revolves around the human operator. We want to estimate the time a human would need to correct the output of our result. So when a human, when our algorithm puts out the correct result, if it says the patient is female and the patient indeed is female, then the human does not have to correct anything. If, however, the, the algorithm forgets vital information, like it has found an adverse event called skin, that's not right. The human needs to read, in the worst case, the whole medical text to find out it's not skin, but skin ulcerations. That can take quite a long time. On the other hand, if it's just adding irrelevant information, like an adverse event called dizziness in March, in March is not really important in this context, so here the human simply needs to delete it. In the end, in this case, we estimate that a human would need about three minutes to correct the results. Three minutes is something people understand. We have a clock. You can go up to your manager and say, hey, we need about three minutes to process one adverse event report. You can do further calculations with it. You know, you need three minutes per report. How many reports can you do in an hour? How many, how many um, uh, sorry, how much time do you need for a thousand reports? This is what we can do. And also, we can fairly simply communicate our target. Our target is to reduce this correction time. The lower it is, the better our algorithm. So, with what can we, uh, what can we use to reduce this correction time? Well, there's a wide array to choose from. We could choose machine learning approaches like conditional random fields or neural networks like we heard earlier today, or even deep learning also like we heard earlier today. The thing is, in order to use deep learning approaches, you need a lot of data. And since we are working with adverse event reports, which contain highly sensitive information, you won't find a big database of adverse event reports lying around somewhere on the internet. So we are currently working with about 500 reports, which isn't really enough for machine learning approaches, so they drop off. What else can we use? Well, we can use existing approaches to build up our system upon and improve it. Well, what existing approaches are there? We have the Apache um, CTEX project, which is um, a natural language processor for specifically medical texts. That works really well. We also have the UMLS project, which is an ontology for medical information. With those two projects at our core, we can further do inference and heuristics to improve upon the results. So we have um, a method to measure the performance. We have sort of an idea what you want to do. How does it work in detail? In detail, 
our approach has to do three things. It has to combine the different inputs, it has to apply our heuristics, and in the end, it has to extract information and put it inside the science form. So let's start with the first thing. We look at the medical form, extract all the information we have from there, and put it inside the knowledge graph we have from earlier. We then take the medical text, push it through CTEGS, and again, add all the information we have from there to our knowledge graph. Now we have all the information from the different inputs combined and ready for our heuristics. We see, in this case, we are missing vital information. We are missing the person's gender. So let's try to do inference and infer the patient's gender from uh, other information we have. So let's start on a fairly low level. We can simply look at the words that were mentioned in the medical text. We can count the gender pronouns, how many times he or she were mentioned. If that is inconclusive, we have all the information connected. So we can look at which sentences were anything mentioned about the patient, any information that we found there. We can further look at the sentences and see if anything was missed. If nothing was missed and we're still out of luck, we can go on a very high level of abstraction. We can look at what else we know about the patient, <coughs> what other concepts are linked to it. In this case, we are lucky. We know that the patient was pregnant in the past. If a person was pregnant, then it's fairly likely that it is a female person, or maybe Arnold Schwarzenegger, that might happen too, but in general, it is a female person. So in birth, patient is female, and we're done. This is the strength of our knowledge graph. We have all the information combined, and we have it on different levels of abstraction. We can jump around those levels and use whatever makes sense in the current context. So the thing that's left to do now is to, again, the thing that's left to do now is to extract information and put it inside the CIOMS form. In essence, this is what our uh, approach does. So, the last thing that's left to say now is how well is it doing it? We are in the med medical domain. That means we need to meet a fairly high level of standards in order to keep any use. Otherwise, if you get half of the words right, then nobody cares. So, our approach currently is able to reduce the average correction time by about eight minutes. Or if you want to um, convert that in business speech, it's about, you can reduce the workload of a human by about 20%. Um, in the US, in 2013, the total costs to process those adverse event reports was about $1 billion. So if you can reduce the costs by 20%, then, well, yeah, that's a lot of money. But these are intermediate results. We have so much more to do. I mean, this is how far we got with inference and heuristics. We can, of course, improve those, but we also would like to add more domain knowledge, more ontologies, more dictionaries, and so on. We also would like to start towards um, the uh, unsupervised learning methods, like word embeddings we had earlier. For that, we need to keep acquiring data. And slowly but surely, we work our ways towards the supervised learning methods and in the end, hope to reduce the correction time further with approaches like conditional random fields or neural networks. They were great. So, this is our presentation. And now we have time to question everything. Thank you very much. You were proper in time, so uh, we have enough time for questions. Please go ahead. Um, yeah, how does it affect the quality? So, uh, if now it's supervised, people might be delayed and uh, they need some. I'm sorry. How does it affect? How does it affect quality of the, of the reports being created? Before it was manually, people were reading carefully, yeah. and now they just might miss some important mistakes. Um, the idea is, or maybe you want to. Uh, yeah, the, the current situation when. Uh, when you have operators, human operators, uh, the, the quality is relatively low. So you have to correct, let's say, uh, uh, more than 50% of the, of, the, of the reports going out are incorrect. 
So uh, it's it's uh, and, and that means corrections. So that means uh, you have to, to to bring it back, or someone has to really go through the uh, the complete report, has to correct it, and then it has to really be uh, be reset. Mm -hmm. So that's the benchmark. And I guess with with this program we are we are far better than, than this. I have currently no no fi uh, real figures, but uh, the gut feeling is, is it looks better than, than this 50%. Uh, you have <laughs> Does this knowledge base that you have put together, does it use probabilities? For example, if you're trying to detect the gender and you have, let's say, the, the height of the person, let's say 195, uh, you know, you could maybe say it's fairly likely to be a male, let's say. But um, do, you, do you use that in the combination with other factors? Or how, how that, do you use the that's how, uh, on our part, to use this inference. Our ontology is more uh, on re really specific medical knowledge, like if you have coughs that is connected to a disease that causes cough, like um, any, uh, you, you know more about that. <laughs> <laughs> but when we have this kind of uncertainty, as you said, we probably we have a, a lady of two, two, two meters. Mm -hmm. said, well, it's, it's, uh, um, it's, it's really uncertain. We have the possibility to, to do a query to the report. So that's really also in the, in the system uh, when, when there is and uh, this borderline situation, or it's unclear, or it's, or it's a conflict of information, then we go back to the report. It's too difficult, too dangerous to, to send out such, such cases. It's in the system integrated to say, find here, uh, it's, it, there's a limitation. You know, a question from the back. Yeah. You can pick. Yeah. Please. Uh, how do you manage to get the uh, the confidence in your predictions or in your output? So it does not have to check every few weeks again. I couldn't understand it. Can you repeat the first part? Uh, how do you get the human operator confidence in your results? So it does not have to check every few weeks again. Yeah. Um, we, do, we do that as a part of it. We say, look, we have uh, this output, we're not sure. Look at that. And the other thing, don't look at that. <laughs> um, it's actually part of our <coughs> estimate correction time. We try to estimate when we always say, hey, look at this result, and it is always right, then he will not look at the result when he really needs to. So there's a penalty inside it. Yeah. But of course, uh, I mean, 10 minutes, you, it, it gets really confusing when you have a big matrix and say, when this is this, then you get at the penalty. But we do that because uh, for exactly this reason. Otherwise, if we say, look at all the results, human, please, it's important, you want. Yeah, the, at the end, it's the, the machine has to, to reach a certain score. And when the score uh, is below, it, it, it has to be checked, crystal clear. Okay, I, I'm sorry, yeah. um, we're running out of time, and I see that there are still many uh, questions around, so I would suggest that you meet again uh, during the coffee break. Let's thank again René Hardinor and Jonas Schwamberger.